Ms. Elizabeth Forst, who is the Principal and Deputy Assistant Secretary from the State Department, and she is joined by new colleagues, Chris Jester and Nate Lane. Welcome to the Embassy of Pakistan. And all distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you are welcome to the Embassy of Pakistan. It's a pleasure to have you here. And we're so glad that you're all joining us to celebrate this special day for us and this special day for Pakistan and the United States. I'm told that uh, my new friends are in, into the State Department who take to Pakistan. Some old friends are uh, leaving the State Department. We wish them well. And I see the tall pair, or me all pair. Uh, standing in a majestic manner. So, wish you success in your future assignment. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take you back to 1947. So, mention the Prime Minister's message and also the President's message that uh, the creation of Pakistan was a long part of war and In fact, there were doubters and skeptics. Skeptics and naysayers who said that this can't happen, that even if the state is created, it would collapse in three to four months, and that they would have to join the Indian Union very shortly. That didn't happen. But the special day that I want to mention is August 15th, 1947, one day after the creation of Pakistan, that Ghaniyaz uh, and Muhammad attended this first ceremony to celebrate the independence of Pakistan. And on that day, on the skies of Karachi, rose this flag, this flag of Pakistan, fluttered in the mild breeze there, to the cheering crowd. And we repeated that ceremony a short while ago here in Washington and all over the world to celebrate our nationhood, our freedom, and our ideals. So this is a special day. And as I've said many times, that uh, our journey has not been easy. In these 75 years, we have gone through many, many, many turbulent storms. And yet we have survived. It's not only that, we started from scratch, and today we have strong institutions in Pakistan. Whether, whether it is the governmental structure, whether it is the economy, whether it is the armed forces of Pakistan, whether it is the nuclear power to which we refer the short by go, it was not something easy to achieve, but we did that in this part of our journey. We've had many failures along the road, but to our resilience and to our ingenuity, we've been overcoming those challenges from time to time. Today, we also peer into the future with confidence, with a bit of apprehension too, but with confidence that we will overcome the difficulties we face today and that we would emerge as one of the strongest, one of the most prosperous nations on the face of Earth. And in that endeavor, we would need the support and succor of our friends by the United States of America. As it was mentioned by the two messages of the President and the Prime Minister, as we celebrate today the 75th anniversary of our diplomatic relations, we also celebrate the establishment of diplomatic relations between Pakistan and the United States. President Truman wrote a letter to Qadiyaz Muhammad al and he offered a relationship based on goodwill and friendship. That was reciprocated by Qadiyaz Muhammad al that spirit permeates our relationship up to this day. Despite ups and downs, peaks and troughs, which can happen to any relationship anywhere in the world, 
but it is between individuals, communities, and nations. We've been partners in peace and war. And uh, we have uh, served in many parts of the world to promote peace, to make peace, to build peace, to keep peace. We've been fellow peacekeepers all around the world. That is also part of our legacy. Our shared ideas. Let me also tell you, I mentioned it frequently, that we can never forget that in the 1950s, when Pakistan was a very fragile state, we developed this partnership with the United States and then served us well. It helped us lay the foundations for our state, whether it was economic planning, whether it was the establishment and strengthening of our armed forces, or whether it was our strategic orientation. We learned a lot from the United States of America. That relationship in the 1950s and 60s was very, very foundational. And, uh, it continues to be relevant to our national planning up to this day. That bond can never be severed because you contributed to Pakistan's stability when it was at its weakest. And now, today, I would say that uh, together, as it was mentioned by Ms. Horst in detail, uh, that. We are investing in trade, in investment in energy, in education, and uh, fighting climate change. Uh, we will collaborate. We conducted a very successful dialogue recently, and you were present also. So, I would say that uh, this is our rich legacy. In this way, all we received students uh, who were sent under the program called SUSI, and also you grads who were here. 65 of them and they were also enthusiastic, so inspired to be here in the United States of America. That builds a bond between our two nations, the youth, and they would ensure continuity of our relationship into the future. Let me also say, because you must be guessing how long my speech You're fired. That I'm moving to my conclusion. So what I want to say is that we have another asset, an abiding asset, and it is Pakistani American community. Well, uh, Ambassador Tom says that it is 500,000, and the proud Pakistani Americans say that there is, they are not less than one million. So I think that we will agree to a median point somewhere between 500,000 and one million. So I think that, but. Whether it is 550,000 or 1 million, it's sizable. It's sizable and they've been successful here. And I've been mentioning it to many older says that the income percentile of Pakistani middle class here in the United States is a bit higher than the middle class of the United States. I should not mention it to the conservatives very often or very frequently. But that's a fact. So I would say that uh, they have made us proud. And they have built this bridge between Pakistan and the United States. And we have doctors and engineers and financiers and bankers and also uh, now some people will be representing the Americans and the US Congress hopefully. Uh, they are in, uh, in, the, uh, in the state assemblies. So, uh, and um, we have some physicists, some uh, physicists and uh, MIT who are from Pakistan in the same. So, and I think that uh, you must have heard of the performance of Guru Chandra, who was given a Grammy, and she was recognized by President Biden in the White House at the uh, e Billion Party. And uh, today, um, I announce with the uh, Great pride that she's been awarded pride of performance by the President of Pakistan. So, <laughs> we'll continue to make our humble efforts to recognize your outstanding achievements here in the United States. So, with these words, I 
Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, uh, we've lined up some younger people, young people, young people uh, who would, I hope, write an eye, who would write an eye, who would an eye, morning. So thank you so much. I will try to bring your presence and your attention uh, while you're listening to these long speeches. Thank you so much.
milestone anniversary, a special event symbol in Pakistan and the United States. We welcome Ambassador Khan and others to the State Department next month to inaugurate a new exhibit for the American Pakistan Foundation at our National Museum of American Diplomacy, celebrating our deepening educational cooperation with a focus on full right. And I also look forward to joining the diaspora community in a number of engagements this fall. Thank you again for the honor of joining you at this and happy anniversary. Pakistan and Brinkha Zero.